<laughs> Hi guys, this is Henry, our other ragdoll cat. I just thought you might like to see him. So this year on my channel, I'm going to try and step out of my comfort zone. And the first thing is to try and get comfortable talking on camera, which I find really hard, but each time it gets a little bit easier. Um, I hope you can tell that. <laughs> So today, what I'm going to do is a little tutorial on the piece that I've just recorded, Iron Algae's Fairy Tale. Um, hopefully it will help listeners understand the music and maybe understand why they feel a certain way when they listen and also hopefully give some nice tips to people playing it. So let's, let's have a go. Oh, by the way, don't forget to like and subscribe. And um, if anybody would like a tutorial on how to play something or if they're having a difficulty, uh, I'm a really experienced pianist and I've got a wealth of knowledge that I'm happy to share. Or equally, if you'd like me to play something for you, just leave it in the comments. <laughs> okay, so fairy tale. Uh, written by Einaldi, the Italian composer, um, is a really, really simple piece, very accessible for people to play. Um, and let's just break it down a little bit and see what's in the music. So the first thing to notice, which hopefully you can see the score, um, is basically how we start. We're in 6-8 time, so that's six quavers or eighth notes in each bar. And that's a really good time signature because it flows and it lilts. And it's really, it can give the innocence that you'd want in something called fairy tale. So just the example of the, the lilting feel of the quavers. So that... first thing to notice really. The second thing is the dynamics. This piece is so quiet. It starts PP, so very quiet. And really important, the whole piece is really based on the first two bars. Um, I'll play the first two bars and then I'll tell you what I mean. Okay, so you've got your quaver arpeggio. We're in A major, so the first bar in the left hand, an A major chord, and above that, the thing that from the very starts creates wonderment and like what's happening. In the right hand, you've a, a G sharp, which makes an immediate dissonance. It's a sound of magic and wonderment, a dissonance that wants to resolve and in the second bar the G sharp falls to F sharp. So you think it's resolved but so let's hear the, the G sharp to the F sharp. You think it's resolved Okay, but in the left hand, your harmony, you've A major, home, that's our home key, and then D major in the second inversion. So it's floating somewhat. So the harmony goes from home key to, which doesn't resolve, it leaves a question. So your left hand is asking a question, whereas your right hand is resolving. So we've got this, this sort of question resolution thing going on the whole time. And basically the whole piece is going to be variations in one form or other of that. So the next thing we're gonna notice is if you look at the whole first line, left hand has A underneath the whole way. So, A. Almost like 
like bells, an A pedal underneath. And in fact, the A stays underneath for the first three lines. And whatever goes on above it is happening. But it's almost like we're in some kind of magic world. A magic world that's suspended above the A. So, still have a listen to that and see if you can hear the resolution with the right hand, G sharp down to F sharp, but at the same time, the question in the, the harmony. And then another thing, the quavers in the left hand, they're clearly the accompaniment. They're the accompaniment, but they give us the flow. They give us the character, the lilting fairy tale feel, the innocent feel. But also, never forget that when you're playing the piano, no notes are what I call throwaway notes. Every note, whether it's an accompaniment, whether it's a melody, there are no notes we throw away. We have to mean and have impetus and feeling behind every note. It's almost like you can feel the love going through your fingers to the keys that you're caring about every note. So even though they're the accompaniment, we have to care about them as well. Always listen, listening to everything. Um, in the third and fourth bars, which is basically a repeat of the first two, with one additional really ornament note at uh, so g sharp and to f sharp this is the first two bars but then in bar three and four g sharp what does that do that almost enhances the feeling that the right hand wants to resolve the g sharp to the f is 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 enhanced by the g sharp being repeated but left hand no is still a question. So it's also interesting to notice the structure of the piece. It's broken up into short phrases. G sharp to F sharp, first phrase. G sharp to F sharp with the extra G sharp, second phrase. And at the end of each of these phrases is a pause, which is really unusual. But it is, it's this pause and this listening time that almost gives the otherworldly feel. That if you are in front of an acoustic instrument, it, so that, that you can hear the music resonating, you, you listen, listen, you can hear the harmonics and everything pinging off inside the piano. I'll show you the pause. <laughs> and then so on. And so these pauses are a feature throughout. Um, so if we move on, basically, line two is a variation on line one. So this is how line two sounds. Identical in the left hand, A major to D major, asking a question. And then, interestingly, the bones of right hand. You have an additional E for the melody note, but the bones are G sharp down to F sharp. But what does that E do? It also makes right hand seem to be asking a question. like what left hand and right hand are now unified they're asking a question carrying on to the third phrase fourth phrase sorry an additional ornament note enhances that feeling of question now special thing happens on line three onwards Line three, line four, there are none of these pauses, these resting pauses where the magic happens. We start to flow. Again, basically using the same notes as the opening. And 
so on. So a couple of interesting things here. So in the second bar where we have the D major chord again, it's the first time that left hand's been allowed to go up the arpeggio and down the arpeggio before it's just been a question. And now we have Um, and then when we get to the third bar of that phrase, actually right hand and left hand are unified and it's the first actual repose. We've resolved. So I'll play up to the resolve and then we'll carry on. There's the unification of the resolve. We've resolved but no pause, keeping the music going. The internal pulse moving on. Now, the first real heart-touching moment happens in the next phrase. First of all, we increase to MP, mezzo piano, so a little warmer. And it's almost like real life is starting to happen. The whole first three lines are based above an A in the left hand. And it's a rather magical moment when we get to the MP passage, and I'll show, I'll point it out on the score. Left hand, the bass moves down to F sharp, and we have a minor key. So we've touched on the sorrow of life, the, something heartrending. So let's hear it. I'll play from the where we reposed here. over that A. So what happens in here, we've left the, the basically this harmony to this harmony and again and again and it just does that again and again up till this point all suspended over the A and then a special moment when we move down to the F sharp and F sharp minor harmony, then E major, D major, back to the home of A major. I'll highlight all that on the score. So I'm going to play for you um, the fifth phrase to where we move down in the bass, so you can hear how that sounds. section so um as you heard after this part it repeats all the time the very simple changes that I and Adi makes to the music always repeating 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 until we come to a really the next really special moment so we have right hands rising and then down to E and a big leap up to the C sharp, the climax of the phrase. And the bass has descended an octave to A, right hand up to C sharp. So it's a really special moment. It's sometimes really interesting that you can, you don't need to analyse the music to feel it, but then when you deconstruct to see well, why does it make me feel like that, it's all there in the score. So a thing that occurs to me in this piece is it's hypnotic. As I said in, in the performance video, it's light time stands still. Why? Why is that? Well, we've noticed there are pauses, it's repeating, there's the resolving, 
the flowing, there's all of these things. But if you think about it, if you meditate, quite often you use a mantra, so a repeated word. And very often in life, when things repeat like this, it is hypnotic, it is relaxing, it does make the world stand still. And repeating a mantra in meditation, basically everything, all the busyness of life and everything that's busy in your brain eventually settles down, like sediment settling down to the bottom of the sea. So the, the stillness, and I think that's possibly what's going on in this piece. The repeating very, very simple motifs that it's made up of, basically, they're almost like an audio form of meditation. The other thing, all the pauses that are all the way along, apart from special moments where the music moves, basically they are almost like time for the stress and strain of life to drain away. Um, so we've looked at some of the some of the things that that happen and how the music is made up. Next, we'll we're going to look ahead a little bit, which I'll show you on the score to where we return to PP, pianissimo, very quiet. And it changes, the pattern changes for a minute. The notes are the same. The notes really, you know, boil down to those first two bars. And the stillness of the music and just literally listening to the sounds is what the music's all about here. I wish you could hear closely um, how the notes are, are resonating in the sine wave because it's really quite, it's quite interesting and extraordinary. I can hear harmonics that are not the notes I'm playing, but the strings vibrating. And it's how he's written it, it's amazing. So the rest of the piece is basically constructed with what we've seen so far, those first two bars, that they're the theme almost. It's almost a theme and variations on the first two bars and all the material really of the whole piece is in there. Um, I'd say this is a really, really simple piece for beginner pianists to play. And so much time is taken to, to listen and hear the sounds, I think it's a really, it would be really rewarding for a beginner pianist. Um, the rest of the piece, as we've said, is, is made up from the material right at the start. So I hope that's given some insight and it's been quite interesting to, to have a look with me at how the music's been made up, what Iron Algae's done and, and how the whole piece really is based on, on the opening couple of bars. Um, a first attempt <laughs> a tutorial um congratulations if you got to the end with me uh congratulations to me for being brave and doing it i hope i don't look um quite as like a deer or a rabbit in the headlights <laughs> my boys i've got two boys edward and toby toby's 17 and edward's 13 and on the first time i tried talking on the video they said Mum, your eyes, mum, your eyes, you look like you're blind or something. Why can't you look straight on? And I'm still not quite sure where to look when I'm talking. <laughs> but it's quite funny. But they have said I'm improving. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so thank you if you watched through with me. And if you would like a tutorial on how to play something, on how to understand something, or even tips and, and tricks for technique. Ask me a question, leave it in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. I've got a wealth of experience and I'm happy to share with you. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave me a comment. All right, love you guys, bye. <laughs>